Hey guys, Doc Eath here. Oh, and we are muted. Oops. Hi. Hi here. Hello. Hey guys, Doc Eath here. We are here with our special guest, Paul Padmore, and he is from, I believe, across the pond, and we're going to get him on the show. Just give us a moment while we get him plugged in. And we'll get on with yet another episode of Executive Espresso Caffeinated Conversations. Hey, Paul, welcome. Can you hear us okay? Oh, uh, we can, I can, maybe you can hear me, but we cannot hear you. Check your, I don't know if there's a setting turned off there. Hey, I think I, think I can hear some rattling around. Can you hear me now? Hey, man, that is fantastic. That's more than fantastic. So I'm actually going to turn my, my own headset down. <laughs> hey, welcome. How are you doing today? Oh, you're gone again. Uh, oh, you're you can back. hear me now. You you're are, good now. You're back. Fabulous, fabulous. How are you? I'm good. It's a bit hot. In England, it's very hot today. So It's hot in England. We're not used to warm conditions. We struggle when it gets warm. How, how warm is warm? I think it's going to be, I don't know what it is at the moment, but I, I hear it's going to be about 20, 20 in the mid-20s mid today. Oh, my goodness, which is, it's a heat wave. Which, which is for us, you know, the entire infrastructure of our country goes into meltdown as soon as we kind of like get those, as soon as we hit those mid-20s. Well, uh, uh, in the States, and, and I don't know the, the uh, calculation for Celsius, but in the States here in Arkansas, where I live, uh, the, the home of one of our former presidents, who's, who's, whose name should not go mentioned. No, I'm just kidding. It's Bill Clinton from uh, yeah. the state of Arkansas. And um, we've had some other runners there. But uh, uh, it'll get to 103 or 4 uh, degrees, uh, heat index being around 115, 116 but nothing like Arizona. Hey guys, let me introduce to you Paul Padmore. Uh, he is a new friend of mine in the, uh, and Paul uh, is going to tell us some, some things about him, but Paul, I like to say, is a professor of failure, and <laughs> he is going to teach us how to turn failures into something that can really boost our success. And I'm so glad to have him here today. He's he's actually has a I would I would say a PhD in perfect failure. <laughs> so tell us a little love about it. yourself, Paul, and how you got into I love this it. particular field. I love it. I love it. So i I'm I just feel great. I've got new certifications that I I wasn't aware that I had, but I've got something to aspire to. So I I I love the idea of being a professor. So so yeah so. Paul Padmore, just said a name. Paul Padmore's a name. Um, I'm from the UK, as, as you've kindly uh, advised everybody. So background, various backgrounds. Invariably, it's a sales-related background, um, customer uh, development, um, a lot of a lot of relationship building, and did, I've done that pretty much my entire life. I, I love people, so I love the opportunity to connect with people, develop those relationships and really progress situations. Worked in the in the publishing industry for, for many years. Then I've navigated into the startup world. And the startup world is where things got kind of interesting for me. Had an opportunity to work in startup industry. Didn't quite pan out the way that you know, I guess I wanted it to and everybody else wanted it to. Although the team, amazing team, really talented people but sometimes when we look at sometimes when we go into those areas sometimes it can be, be, be about timing having the right solution at the right time so it never quite worked out but things moved on reasonably quickly so i got made redundant from that role but when that happened i really started thinking about people that have really been able to transition from those difficult moments because we don't really we hear about all the celebrated people, people like Michael Jordan, Oprah Winfrey, those guys. But we don't really hear about the normal people, people like me and lots of other people that do this. Well, and do also, this. Paul, you, you don't hear about those people's failures. Uh, all, That's all right. All those are kind of covered up. I mean, Babe Ruth, yeah. you know, one of the most famous baseball players in the States, 
probably the world is is you, you just hear about the called shot where he stood there and he and he yeah. pointed. I'm trying to get my finger on camera where yeah. he's going to put the shot, but you don't hear about all the strikeouts, so just kind of fade into the background. And by the way, I think that there's some psychology there that I'm hoping we can get to about mm. how is it in our minds that we can put failures in their proper perspective where even in our own minds they kind of fade into the background as the failures of some of the most famous people that we've heard of kind of fade into the mm. into the background of the common psyche because you don't uh, I'm, I'm sure Oprah Winfrey has had I, I'm sure she could write a book on her failures mm. but that's not what's put out there yeah and I, and I think you get to, I think you get I think the holy grail for me is when you get to that point where you if you have something that we aspire to it can be part of driving test it can be it can be to to get a job it might be to a, a relationship that we want to get to but it's to get to that point where we know that there are we understand there are going to be obstacles there but we view them as part of the journey and we don't view anything that happens in that situation as final and i think for me certainly up until a number of years ago probably until i started doing the podcast everything was pretty final everything every obstacle would be okay that makes that hasn't worked maybe i should never ever focus on it ever again but i think from from what i have seen over the last say four or five years i think I think there is a skill in when knowing to give up. So I'm not saying that we should blindly carry on doing things when, when certainly it doesn't make sense. But I certainly think that what I've found from this last four years of doing the podcast is that I think that what people do, and I definitely get with this myself, we neglect all the, all the amazing information that we get when we, come up against difficult moments, failures, setbacks, whatever you want to call it. There's all this informa this new information that we didn't have access to before that invariably we ignore that. We focus on that final moment. And I think one of the keys for me is take advantage of that, of, of all that new information that we now have, because that act, you know, if we go, if we dig deep into that, we will find the treasure trove of really useful information and so much growth. We would have grown from the point of starting the journey to the point of where we start to review situations. There would have been huge growth, but we in, but invariably, for some reason, we neglect that. Well, I think part of that is, is uh, I call it underthinking, because we, we, we focus in on the misstep and we ignore all the other mm. important aspects of the situation. And it's all those important aspects of the situation that fade into the background. And a, a little bit of neuroscience is, is, is the brain is actually built to create more of what you think more about. It's just the way it works. Uh, if, if your mind is always on the... Uh, well, a, a good way to do a perfect golf swing is to practice a perfect golf swing, but also not just when you're swinging the club, but in mm. your mind when you're walking and talking and eating before you're going to sleep and then you dream about it. The more you think about something, the more your brain creates more of it. And one more thing, you talked about the journey. I remember I, I used to travel a lot, and it's, it's crazy as it sounds. Yes, I know I've gotten plenty of lectures from my wife about this. <laughs> Fill up your freaking gas tank. <laughs> well, I was in a hurry, and, and I was, I was going to be late for the plane uh, on the outbound, mm. and I forgot about it on the inbound until I got almost home, and I was about uh, five miles from the closest gas station, ran out of gas, and I ran out of gas. And, yeah. of course, I called AAA. AAA, surprise, he was not available. And so I had a nice 10-mile round-trip walk to get gas and put it back in my tank. There's no one out there to, uh, to help me, and I wasn't going to call my wife at 2 a.m. to get her out of bed to do that. And so how I decided to think about that was that was just a very interesting part of the journey. Mm. It wasn't the whole journey. It was a small portion of the journey, 
but why not approach it with curiosity? Mm. And yes, I learned a big lesson. Um, no offense to AAA, but they're not going to come where I live. At <laughs> uh, uh, prepare, uh, look around. And I mean, I, I, I've, I've not done that since. So that was, mm. that's very educational. But when there is a misstep or a failure, I think it's a mistake to hone in on it at, at the expense of the entire rest of uh, the journey. Yeah. And so what are some ways? Yeah, go ahead. So, so just to... I guess support that point there's there's a book i think it's called gap and again by i think it's dr benjamin hardy there's something gap, along those lines again, I think it's called um gap in the game gap in the game gap, gap in the game and I, I try and crystallize what, what he refers to in that book so so what he's talking about is the idea that when we do something say if we've got a, a presentation to do it can be anything everybody will have their own situation where you can maybe draw parallels to but it might be that we've got an impre a presentation to do and to a client a new client a lot of pressure get, a lot of pressure might be to win a new piece of business and you might be up against competition you deliver the presentation and maybe it doesn't hit all the elements that you that we wanted to achieve prior to to delivering a presentation and invariably the way that the, i'm not a psycho psychologist like you but the way that the brain works in brain will invariably lean in towards the negative it focuses on that but what he talks about is the idea that there's always a gain there we all should we always should once we've come out of the meeting and we in the uk we have a cup of tea and we we you invariably use that tea time to try and gather our thoughts so you know when we're sat down with our cup of tea and we're thinking about actually that the meeting there will always be some gain there so we need to folk we need to spend some time to think about the gain the gain could be actually this was a client that we hadn't pitched to before didn't know us now they know us actually i don't know well i might think it's not gone brilliantly but we don't know that yet because we don't have the feedback and actually you know i could have, we could have got some feedback from that client but but and so there are always some gains there and it's getting that it's developing that ability where we've got the the foresight to always think about gains in any situation because there always are some gains i agree i think if we don't unwrap that that we miss the learning that's wrapped up inside. Mm. And I think a, another way to think about it, restructure thinking about it, that is, is to realize that uh, if, if you look at uh, failure properly, the only failure that ever happens is not learning something yeah. from uh, a difficult situation. Uh, the only thing that turns a difficult situation into a failure is if we learn nothing. So yeah. As I like to tell my patients, never waste a failure, never waste a mm. hurt. Mm. And we're all we're a little bit past the halfway point, so I've got something for Paul that he didn't expect, and this is uh, what I would call a um, not an exam, uh, is of, it? Kind of a yeah, an exam. It's it's a psychological exam. Buckle okay. Uh, it, it's a, it, it, I call it a triple shot, and I'm going to ask him some just three quick questions and just mm. your quickest response. For you, what tends to be your most sabotaging thought? Mm, I'm not, I, I, I'm not good enough or I can't do something. I think that is probably for men, one of the most popular ones. Mm. And I will tell you, you folks listening, is that thoughts of failing uh, is what's going to sabotage your performance and more sure that you're going to fail because that becomes your target. Um, mm. Second question, uh, what would you say is your biggest current struggle with failure? Because I think we have failures at something every day. I know I do. Uh, conversations that I could have done a better job with my wife, with a client. Uh, what, what's your biggest current failure struggle? Um, so I fail every day, so I think I'm better at dealing with failure. But I think may, maybe part of my struggle is not always taking advantage of the of the new information. So it's digging into that information that's there. I, I spoke about that earlier. So sometimes what I don't do is spend sufficient time digging into that information and actually really examining that and understanding what I can do to improve the situation. 
And uh, thirdly, what would you say is your most life-affirming belief, something that you tell yourself on a regular basis that just gives you a mental boost? Um, so I think for me, it's the, it's, a, it's, it's a bit of a statement. I've got this. And that, to me, means that whatever the situation, I, I there's a solution there. I've got this means that Paul can actually find that solution there. So I've got the ability, the creativity to actually find the solution. That is so spooky. I'm not a big believer in psychic activity. But we've got this mental link going on because mine is everything 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 is figure outable mm. everything is figure out mm. and, and i find that it is i, I will find mm. myself s literally sleeping on it my wife mm. will say what are you gonna do about this what are you gonna do about that i don't know by the way guys it's okay to not know instead of mm. pressuring yourself i gotta know gotta know gotta know gotta know give yourself a break and be okay with not knowing a solution mm. and then your brain will be working on it in the background we got about uh, four or five minutes to wrap up paul what are some final thoughts for our uh, audience here today and then we'll we'll, we'll kind of leave it with a uh, as we call a, a maxwell house statement maxwell is a coffee in the u.s it's they say <laughs> good to the last drop and so as a uh, a good to the last drop comment at the end we'll get to that in a moment but what are some other thoughts to help folks reconfigure how they think about failure well, I think that everybody has, we all have huge capability. We shouldn't be afraid if we have ambition, if we have a purpose, if there's something that we've, where we've got a burning desire, then actually failure is going to be part of the process. So a famous entrepreneur, marketeer, Seth Godin always talks about the idea that if I fail more than you, then I win because he knows that in order for him to really achieve the edges of what he's trying to achieve, failure is part of the process. So if you've got something that, that's been on your mind for years and you've really got this burning desire to do it, but you've never had the confidence to actually go after it, go after it. Don't be afraid of failure. Use failure as your as your beacon, as your as your baton to really help you navigate one stage to the next because it really is your opportunity and I, I guess lastly you know we can get to the point where i'm not saying that we should again re, sort of to regurgitate the point that i made earlier if something simply isn't working then that's fine because it means that you've got that information and it tells you that that's not a particular area for you to proceed so that that, that isn't wasted because you've got to that you've got to that point but also you will have additional information where actually you might actually have found something that is equally an opportunity for you to pursue, but it might be something different. Uh, that, that is such wonderful wisdom. I really appreciate that. I'm sure our listeners do too. I'm, I'm reminded in parting of a famous salesman that he actually wrote a book and has a system called the Sandler sales system. Uh, the great book, by the way, is you can't teach a kid to ride a bike at a seminar. I think I got that right. Weird title, but good book. And I, I believe Sanders' philosophy is that he would count on failing at a sale 99 times before he made mm. that one sale. Uh, so he he believed that on his hundredth attempt, he would be he would make a success, make a sale. Therefore, he tried to get the first 99 out of the way really? every day as soon as Brilliant. possible because every no placed him one step closer to a yes yeah yeah i love it i love it and just a quick a quick uh, example similar Sir, sarah blakely the founder of spanx she famously talks about the idea that her dad when she was a kid would when she went to school when she came home she, her dad would always ask her and her brother what did you fail out today and if she said nothing if they said nothing he would be terribly disappointed because he would have he viewed that as they're not learning they're not stretching themselves so and she's gone on to and, and i think she's taken that uh, that analogy that approach all the way through her career and she's done incredibly well so there is an approach that so there is 
some method to to the idea of really not being afraid to push the boundaries and and fail when we need to sometimes it's important to fail absolutely thank you guys for joining us thank you so much paul hang around we'll do kind of a post show thing after we let our audience go here but you guys get out there and turn your stumbling blocks from tombstones into stepping stones and join us next week same time 9 a.m central that's memphis chicago time appreciate you guys joining us thank you paul for being here thank you